Well, were your wedding plans ever up in the air? We've got plenty of couples who could say the same thing. We'll be right back with that. Well, Katie, talk about a higher love. 14 couples exchange wedding vows on top of the Empire State Building. It's amazing. 13 of the couples were married on the 6th. All around the area tonight. Yeah, you had a lot of fun. Hey, do you remember Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons? I think I do. I wasn't well, of really alive, but I remember them. On <laughs> oh, records, you remember yes. them. Well, I do too. They had this one <laughs> song called Walk Like a Man. A oh. gorilla is going to remind you of that song when we come back. All right, remember Frankie Valley. Before we go tonight, a gorilla at a British zoo has become the latest unlikely internet hit. I'm in love with this story. Meet Am Bam. And yes, he is walking like oh, a human. He's walking. You, you know what he is? <laughs> Pretty he's, cool. He's a good citizen. He's an upstanding ape. Yes, oh. yes. And I think is. those bowlers are definitely uh, bragging about what they did around school today and will so for a long As time well to come. well, they should be. Right. Well, they should, yeah. I'll tell you what, Ed, I wouldn't want to meet them in an alley. Well, as long as I was willing, no. Come yeah, on, I right. got a Valentine's Day joke there for you. <laughs> I like that one. Maybe you're feeling a little crabby on this Valentine's Day. You're not alone. We'll explain when we come back. Okay. Well, two types of people out there tonight. Those feeling a little crabby and those a little happy on Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. Well, wait a second. Check that. There might be some who are both crabby and happy. That's true. Well, Flores. And out. after sports, feathers flying everywhere. Look at this. San Francisco tradition continues. Pugnacious pillows later as News 5 at 6 continues. $1,000. Guys, I like my pillow too much. I'm not taking it out there. Yeah, and I'm Bill Stekis, the Murray, Nebraska man accused of killing four motorcyclists in a drunk driving crash back in August found himself back in court today. 21-year-old Andrew Schlichtemeyer has pleaded. By storm. Bill, back to you. All right, Katie, rocking some REO Speedwagon there. Maybe we'll see him in this building before too long. Well, there's still much more ahead tonight on News 5 at 6, including the latest on the Husker coaching shakeup. But next, will there be more of this soon? Brittany has the answer when News 5 at 6 continues. Last night. Yeah, and he's also going to hang out with the Hastings High bowling team, who looks to strike a smile on the face of an ailing teammate. Good-hearted bowlers on the way when News 5 at 6 continues. You're watching News 5, coverage you can count on with Bill Steckens and Katie Farrell. Weather with Brittany Rainey and sports with Ed Littler. News 5 at 6 continues. The Buffalo County attorney says the death of a UNK student yesterday morning was accidental and not a suicide as originally believed. The University of Nebraska County contraception, HIV, AIDS education, all that could become mandatory to your child's curriculum. That's if a state lawmaker gets her bill through the legislature. News 5's Anthony Pura is live in the newsroom with details. And Anthony, how early would sex education start for Nebraska kids under this bill? Well, age But with a revenue shortfall of $986 million, state services are on the chopping block, including one that has sheriffs across the state crying foul. News 5's Rachel Lake joins us in the studio with details. Rachel, what bill are we talking about here? Bill, chocolates, Katie. roses, diamonds. Yeah, all those things, but not for Ned and Laura Nelson in Grand Island. Nothing says I love you like a barbershop quartet. News 5's Amy West shares their Valentine tradition. Lovely. That sure was sweet. Yeah, it sure was. You know, it's a lot better than some chocolates. The Conestoga Barbershop chapter has an upcoming concert, if you like this sort of thing, on March 12th. For more information, go to our website, khastv.com. Well, stick around. Brittany's up next with a gem of a forecast. You're going to see uh, if winter might seem to be over, at least for the time being. Might be taking a break I anyway, so. right? And later, more good news for red wine lovers. Could it help with some forms of cancer? That's in your family health cast. Stay with us as News 5 at 10 continues. Unfortunately. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks for looking in, guys. Uh, Lady Gaga is on Leno. I'm Bill Steckis on News 5 at 10. Details unfold in the McCook presumed murder case that leaves the family of a 14-year-old girl in shock. Have you checked your home for radon lately? Anthony Pura tells us why you should and our nation's capital prepares for the State of the Union address. Those stories and more after Harry's Law. Join Katie and me for News 5 at 10. Good evening, I'm Bill Steckis. Here's what we're working on for News 5 at 10. A Bartley man is arraigned in the brutal murder of a McCook teenager. Protesters at the state capitol voiced their concerns over a proposed Arizona-like immigration law and finishing touches on Nebraska's plan to re-implement the death penalty. Those stories and more after Outsourced 
Join Katie and me for News 5 at 10. I gave it my best shot, gave people a chance, and they chose somebody else. It's a side of football legend Tom Osborne you never heard before. I'm News 5's Bill Steckes, and in a candid sit-down with me, the Husker icon talks about his life off the field after the final gun sounded, his ups and downs as a U.S. congressman, why he wanted to give politics a try, the Tom Osborne you never knew tonight at 6, only on News 5. Well, you know him as T.O. or Dr. Tom, but there is a side of Tom Osborne that he doesn't often reveal. We got a chance to sit down and see that side with him when we talk to the Nebraska athletic director with a candid conversation in his office. National championship, yeah. so you got to like yeah. that. In so yeah. many ways, Tom Osborne yeah. is Nebraska, but as the seasons change in our state, T.O. doesn't. So uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. It was a good place to grow up. His grown up success ranges from the captain of a football team to Capitol Hill. It hasn't always been easy for the man who personifies perseverance as a coach, a community leader, and a U.S. representative. The accolades bring peace, same serene outlook moving forward. You seem happy and at peace, mm -hmm. working hard, making mm -hmm. a difference here. How do you like this role? Well, I, I enjoy ath athletes because they're, they're people who really work hard and they are very disciplined and they're willing to take a chance. Um, and I, I can get along with the public in general. You know, sometimes they get a little demanding, but that's okay. Now that he's back working with athletes, the laundry list of improvements to the athletic department stacks up. Trying to add on to the stadium, trying to do some things to Devaney building a new basketball practice facility, doing, building a new baseball indoor, baseball softball indoor facility. That comes without soliciting a dime of taxpayer money. And on that note, you become a congressman and you go to Washington. What, was it all that you expected? Was there a disappointment? It was a lot of work. Uh, I think sometimes people bash Congress and um, so it's a, um, kind of a grueling life and uh, usually got done about 8, 10 o'clock at night, started out at 8 o'clock the next morning and uh, that went a long time. Sometimes we would walk off the house floor and the sun would be coming up. We would have voted all night. Any regrets on the 06 governor's race? Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't win. <laughs> I regret that. But, you know, I don't regret the way we did it. In that um, we, um, I didn't, I didn't throw any any uh, mud at anybody. Part of the reason he lost is what he calls a basic misunderstanding. The thing that did me in, I think, was that um, I thought that the um, children of illegal immigrants, if they had been here for three, four, or five years, were brought here as small children, had no choice in the matter, were able to uh, uh, speak English graduate from high school, pass a college entrance exam, and sign up for citizenship, that those were the kind of people that made the country great. And, um, and so I thought maybe they should be given in-state tuition. He said there were only around 30 kids that that would affect. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that that's in the news today. Yeah, it and, sure and is. That Perfect was back timing. Then as well. Yeah. Well, what a nice guy. He too. is on the list with the great coaches in history. He's Nebraska's proud native son, complete with a football stadium and a highway named in his honor. Now, Tom Wolf said you can never come home, but Osborne proves that famous author wrong every time he comes to Hastings. In part two of our special series, we continue the conversation with patience. But back in the day, there was a little heat on you, but that old school, which is a good school in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, mentality gave you a chance to hang in there and blossom. Do you think that plays into your patience mm -hmm. with this department? Well, it could be. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we had some nine win seasons where we had three losses, and people thought they ought to go. And, and, uh, but I had Bob Devaney as an athletic director. And uh, he understood, uh, I think at that point, what I understand now, and that is that uh, it's not always going to be a bed of roses. And um, when you think about it, um, if you can win 75% of your games, now that's nine and three, uh, you will rank with the all-time great coaches because uh, that's about what Bear Bryant won. 
about 75 percent. And so uh, these people that want to fire somebody after they lose three games, uh, uh, you'd fire an awful lot of good coaches. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, you're on that list of those iconic uh, figures, uh, college football coaches. What does that mean to you? Well, again, it's in the eyes of the beholder. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's still some folks in Nebraska that can remember those nine and three years, mm -hmm. and they say, well, man, that, that wasn't very good. But, um, yeah, I, we, we were fortunate. We had a lot of good players, had good assistant coaches, and we had great continuity. Well, now mm -hmm. that you're burning the midnight oil, switching to the Big Ten, what, what's the biggest challenge there? What are some of the things that you've had to go through that maybe people don't understand in mm -hmm. switching the conference? Well, I think that, <clears throat> that most people just assume it's a matter of getting a schedule. You know, you, you play certain games on certain dates, and then you go do it. And um, I've been impressed by Jim Delaney, the uh, commissioner of the Big Ten, because he, he realizes that uh, when you come from one conference like the Big 12 and go into the Big Ten, there's a merging of cultures. And anyone who's changed job from one company to another realizes that the way things are done in one company isn't the way it's done in another. And if there was any one mistake that we made, I think, in forming the Big 12 conference, that was probably something that we ignored. What makes you smile? Well, the thing that I probably enjoy more than anything else is fishing. And um, <clears throat> I don't know that as I'm fishing, I'm always smiling. Mm -hmm. But I'm usually pretty content. I, I really enjoy the outdoors. And it isn't so much shooting something or even necessarily catching fish, but I, I just enjoy nature. I enjoy being outside. And I guess part of that is because I spend so much of my time around people. Well, we thank him for spending time with our people. Good to see him smile, too. Tonight at 10, we'll get Tom Osborne's thoughts on his coaches and their take on the move to the Big Ten. Katie, back to you. Learned a lot tonight. I never knew. Thanks, Bill.